Lightroom has a feature that most people ignore, but by implementing it, you can make it so if anything happens with your Lightroom catalog file, it gets corrupt, it gets deleted, anything. You can still access your images, adjust them, uh, export them to give to a client, that kind of stuff, even if you can't even get Lightroom to run. Let's take a look at how it works and how you can implement it. I've used Lightroom since it came out and I've had this happen where suddenly I'm trying to open my Lightroom catalog file and it can't, it's corrupt. It's nice that it offers on the right side a repair catalog button, but sometimes you click that button and this is what you get as a result. It says you just cannot repair it. Well, dang, that means I can't get into my Lightroom catalog file. And if you make backups, that's fine. But if your backup's not on a separate drive than your original, then if that drive goes bad, you still can't get to your catalog. And I just had this running today saying I don't have an automated backup. Well, that's not the only thing that can happen. Also, sometimes you can try to do something in Lightroom and suddenly an error occurs for an unknown reason. It where Lightroom might just suddenly quit and then your operating system tells you that it did. Uh, or here's another message. I've gotten all of these messages. There's more than that. Here's an internal error and it never really tells you why it happened. Instead, it's not your fault. So let's say you can't get to your Lightroom catalog file and maybe Lightroom won't even run. So now what can we do? What would happen if we try to use just the images themselves? Well, let's take a look. So here's the idea. When you work in Lightroom, you have two things you're working with. On the right side is my folder with my original pictures in it. And on the left side is my folder that has my Lightroom catalog file. My Lightroom catalog file is highlighted there. I can see it's been updated today at 3.59 p.m. That's the last time I adjusted an image. But look over at the original files and look at their date modified. Their date modified is in general the day that they were captured. And that's because Lightroom doesn't usually touch the original image and the one exception up there is a TIFF file that's because I made that TIFF file in Photoshop after the capture date so that's why its date is there but all the changes you make to those original files are only stored in that Lightroom catalog file so if that file gets corrupt you can't open it or Lightroom doesn't work then all you have access to is your original pictures well, if I take one of these images and I attempt to open it, I'm just going to take the image and drag it over to Photoshop, hoping it's going to open. Well, it's the original file, so it should open just fine. This is nothing like what it looked like in Lightroom, though, since I had optimized it extensively. This was much brighter. The sky was yellowish and all that. So I'm going to click on Cancel. And if I were to view that same folder within Bridge, then I also see here is a dark version of that picture. The cropping on this image is not right. The brightness and the color of my wife's shirt in these shots just aren't what they were before. And so it seems like I've lost everything. And that's because I was completely trusting my Lightroom catalog file. Now here back in Lightroom, let's think about what could we do to change that situation so we're not completely relying on our Lightroom catalog file. Well, what I could do is type Command A to select all these pictures, and then I can go to the metadata menu, and that's where I'm gonna find a choice right here called Save Metadata to Files. When I do that, up here in the upper left, you see a progress bar as it's adding new information to the folder. And now if I go and view that image in the finder, I'm gonna find it's different. There's almost twice as many files in here. And here it might be my original raw file that I attempted to open previously in uh, Photoshop, but now there's an extra file right below. That's an XMP file. And that file is gonna be our backup that makes it so we don't really care that much if our Lightroom catalog file gets corrupt or deleted. Because now if I take this image and I drag it over to Photoshop, unlike my first attempt, this attempt might take a teeny bit longer to open as it reads that little XMP file and loads all the data in it. But now I have the exact same adjustment that I had when I was working in Lightroom. Or if I cancel that out and I instead go to Bridge. In Bridge, I can see the image right there. Also, I notice the cropping on this image changed. I notice I have 
uh, star ratings now. I also have color labels and the vivacity of my wife's shirt is the way it's supposed to look because everything in here is reading all the data that is usually only stored in your Lightroom catalog file, but now it's not restricted to that area. This TIFF file might look like it's broken, but it's not. It just means there's no preview inside of it. If I open the file, it opens just fine. So let's look at what's saved into an XMP file and why some images get them and others don't. First, here's what's saved into an XMP file. The develop settings that we had in the develop module, but not the history list. That's just like if you adjusted something with Camera Raw and you open it again, you have no history. That's because Camera Raw relies on XMP files and they don't store that. Uh, star ratings you've applied, color labels you've applied, anything that you've changed in the metadata panel on the right side of Lightroom, like adding a caption or GPS data, that would be saved. And then any keywords that you've applied as well. What's not saved in those little XMP files are the following. No virtual copies. And that's because Lightroom's XMP files are really designed to work with Camera Raw and Camera Raw doesn't support virtual copies. It just doesn't know what they are. Uh, the other thing is no stacks. If you stitched a panorama and had the original images kind of slid underneath that so you only see the end result and the original images are hidden in that stack, they're just gonna become unstacked. Also no collections. It won't remember the names of collections or which images were in each collection. And finally, the sort order. If you set up, let's say, a slideshow so you got it in exactly the right order, uh, that's gonna be lost because that is not saved within the XMP files. Then on the left is the original folder before we started using XMP files. On the right is what we got after typing Command S, which is Control S in Windows, to save things out to XMP files. Now, if you look at this, you're going to notice something a little odd, and that is not every single file got an XMP file. The images that are highlighted in gray, those are the originals, meaning the same as what you see on the left side of my screen. And if you were to compare the modification dates to, of all of those, you're going to find in there that only a couple of them changed. The TIFF file that's there and the HEIC file that's there did not get an XMP file. Although its modification date for both of those, the TIFF and the HEIC, they match what the XMP files are. That's because any file format other than RAW, they're designed to store that kind of information in the file itself. It's only a RAW file where it's supposed to be the raw data that the camera captured with no modification. That's what raw means. And so therefore we can't change those raw files, otherwise they wouldn't be raw anymore. So it creates an XMP file only for those. XMP files in concept are actually really simple. It's just a text file. It might have the letters XMP on the end so that imaging software like Lightroom and Bridge and Camera Raw can understand it, but you could actually select the file extension that's on the end of one of those little files and change it to the letters TXT. And if you did, then any program designed for opening text files, like a word processor, would be able to open it and you can actually see the contents and read it. It's in kind of English. Let's take a look. So here I've taken an XMP file, changed it to TXT, and you can see it changed the file type from image file to plain text file. Well, if I just double click on that file, then it opens it in a text editor. And in this case, I can look. Right there it says exposure. I did plus two five. I increased contrast by 56. I had my shadow slider turned all the way up to 100 and so on. If I were to continue scrolling down, I would find additional text. In this case, I see the word heal, and that means I was retouching the image with the healing tool, the spot removal brush, to get rid of a camera sensor dust speck. Below that, it says I made a mask, and it was an elliptical shape, and it describes its size. If I scroll down even further in the same text file, I would find the keywords that have been applied to that image. And that's all it is, is a text file that describes what you've done to the image in Lightroom. That's the information that's usually stored in your Lightroom catalog file. And in that file, it's also saved just like this, this text. It's just usually stuck in that one file in Bridge, in Camera Raw, in Photoshop, can't get inside that file unless we save it in an XMP file.
So let me show you how to save into an XMP file. We've done it once already, but there's more than one method. If you go to the metadata menu in Lightroom, when you have an image selected, about three quarters of the way down, you find the choice of save metadata to files. That's what either creates those XMP files, updates those files, or updates a TIFF or other file format image. Or you can go into your catalog settings in your preferences, and you're gonna find the third checkbox from the top is called automatically write changes into XMP. And that's gonna make it so you don't have to think about it. Instead, anytime you leave the develop module, it would automatically include all those changes you've made, kind of like an instant backup. So if your Lightroom catalog file uh, got corrupt two seconds later, you could open that original image in Photoshop and it would still have the adjustments you've made. So let's do that and see what it gives us. I'm gonna take all these images by typing Command A, that's Control A in Windows, and then I'm gonna type Command S, which is simply the shortcut for this. You'll see it listed right on the right side. When I type Command S in the upper left, it tells me it's saving out the metadata there and the folder that was in there didn't have any of those little XMP files to begin with, but now if I take one of these images and right click on it, I'm gonna come in here and say show in finder so I can actually see the folder that it's contained within, and if I look, now we have these XMP files that did not exist before, and I can tell you right now it's 11.01 uh, a.m. as I record this, these just got updated. You'll also notice the TIFF file, it doesn't have an XMP file on it, but it's date get, get updated. That means something changed in that file. It didn't actually open the picture and change the picture at all. It just changed some text that's attached to the image. Same thing is true down here with the HEIC file. So now if I were to take one of these uh, images here and attempt to open it, I could drag that image over to Photoshop. It's a raw file, so camera raw will be launched and it's gonna look in the same folder as that file. If it finds an XMP file, it's gonna load it in so that all of these adjustments are dialed in and it remembers them. Also, if I were to take bridge and point it at that folder, I think I have the folder right here called images. I'm just gonna drag it to bridge. Then you can see all the files look fine. The only thing is that TIFF file looks like it didn't have a preview built in, but I'd be able to open it just fine but all of these have the adjustments, all of these also have any cropping that was applied, and now I can even see that it has the star ratings, it would contain metadata of uh, my keywords, and it also has any color labels that were applied. So once you have your data backed up, so it's not just stored in your Lightroom catalog file, instead it's also stored in XMP files or in the case of TIFF and other file formats right in the file itself, then if your Lightroom catalog gets corrupt and your backup also isn't useful, you could just create a brand new Lightroom catalog file, choose import and point it towards your images. And it would have not only those original untouched images it would know about, but with that XMP metadata, it's gonna also know all the adjustments you applied, the star ratings, the labels, keywords, all that stuff would go right into that brand new Lightroom catalog. Now there's a lot more to know about metadata in XMP files, but I don't wanna give you too much here. Sometimes you're gonna see icons in the upper right of your thumbnail images that have to do with metadata. Also, there are some preferences related to it. All of it is useful, but I wanna know if you're interested because I don't wanna to spend too much time getting in depth here unless I'm really connecting with what you're looking for. But I'm Ben Wilmore and I'll see you next time.